Six students, welcome again in our math six class, and this is Miss Claire. In this video, we will continue our lesson for chapter seven. And in this video, you will learn lesson three, number sequences, and lesson four about decimals. You can find these two lessons in your pupils' book pages ninety six until one hundred and four. The learning objectives of these lessons are to find rules for number sequences, to write decimals with place values up to thousands, and to recognize the place value of each digit in decimals. Okay, P6, come on, let's start. Okay, let's start with lesson three about number sequence. What is a number sequence? Number sequence is a list of numbers that are connected by a certain rule. For example, I have here a number sequence. We have 10, 16, 22, 28, and 34. Take a look from 10 to 16. What is the difference? Yes, it's 6. So we add 6, we, got, we will get 16. Another 6, we got 22. And another 6, we got 28. And another six, we got 34. So the difference between each pair of consecutive numbers is six. Now, let's compare our number sequence with the multiples of six. So we have six, 12, 18, 24, and 30. Let's say that we will add four to number six. It will give us 10. Right, so take a look. On our number sequence, we have 10. Now, next, let's move to 12. But we add four, it will give us 16. Same. 18 plus 4 is 22, same also, 24 plus 4 is 28, and 30 plus 4 is 34. So, if you observe from our number sequence here that if we will use the multiples of 6 and we add 4, we can find this number sequence. So, our rule for this number sequence is to add 4 to multiples of 6. So, if we add 4 to the multiples of 6, what would be our next series after 34? Okay, P6, reserve your answers during our Zoom meeting. And another set of sequence, we have 7, 11, 15, 19, and 23. Okay, now, 7 children is our first term. 11 is our second term, 15 is the third, 19 is the fourth, and 23 is the fifth, and so on. We can still find the next term. Okay, let's compare this number sequence to the multiples of 4. Try to find out. If we add 3 to number 4, it will give us 7, right? The same with our first term. Now, on our second term, we have 8, we plus or add 3, it will give us 11. They are the same, right? And 12, if we add 3, the same, we got 15. And 16, we plus 3, we got 19. And 20, if we add 3, we got 23. So, therefore, our number sequence, we can give the rule by adding 3 to the multiples of 4. Okay. Now, so, we can have this pattern that we got 7 if we multiply 1 by 4 and we add 3. We will get 11 if we multiply 2 times 4 plus 3. Next is 15 by, by multiplying 3 and 4 plus 3. 19 is by multiplying 4 and 4 plus 3 and 23 is by multiplying 5 times 4 plus 3. So the 7, 11, 15, 19, and 23 are what we call terms. So in our example, we have 5 terms. The numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are what we call the term number. So in this pattern, we can come up with this rule. The rule then is to multiply the term number by 4 and then add 3. What are the term numbers? We have the 1, 2, 3, 
4, 5. So we will just multiply it by 4 and then we add 3. And we can find the terms. We can also use this formula for our rule. 4n plus 3. What is n? n is the term number. So if you have 1, it means to say the first term. So 4 times 1 plus 3, that is 7. If we want to find the term number 2, so 4 times 2, that is 8, plus 3, we got 11. Okay, now, I have here an, another example. Let's try to find out the different terms. A number sequence starts at 12, and the rule is, is to multiply the previous term by 2 and then add 2. So our first term is 12 because it will start at 12, right? So how to get the second term? To get the second term is you are going to multiply the previous term by 2. It means we will multiply 12 by 2 and then add 2. So second term is by multiplying 12 by 2 plus 2 and it will give us 26. Same rule for third term term so 26 this is the previous times 2 that is 54 52 26 times 2 is 52 plus 2 that is 54 okay fourth term is the previous is 54 times 2 that is 108 plus 2 that is 110 then fifth term we multiply 110 by 2 that is 220 plus 2, 222. So the first five terms are 12, 26, 54, 110, and 222. So remember also children that we can also use the letter N to represent the first term. So and the second term is 2N plus 2. Okay, so the N could be also represent the first term. So, if we have 2N plus 2, it means 2 times the previous term or the first term. That is 12. 24 plus 2, you got 26. Okay, another. This one. Let's try to find out the next three terms. The first term is 8. And the rule is multiply the term number by 3 and then add 5. So this is the first term means the term number is 1, right? So we have the second term. So if we have, if you want to find the second term, because second, so that is number 2. So 2 times 3, then add 5. So the second term is 11. How about the third term? So we have, because a third term, so we have 3 times 3 plus 5, that is 14. Then the fourth term, because fourth, so number 4, that this is the term number. 4 times 3, that is 12 plus 5, that is 17. So we already got our first three terms. We have 11, 14, and 17. Okay, so this is, these are our first three terms now can you find the fifth term by following this rule multiply the term number by three and then add five so children that's how to find the missing terms by using the given rule now let's go to lesson four about decimals okay let's divide one whole or one into one thousand parts so, one part then of one whole is one thousandth, or written as a fraction like this, one over one thousand. One over one thousand, or one thousandth, can be written in decimal like this. How to read this? That is 0 0.001. So, this is how to read this decimal number. So what if if we have 4 1000 so that is equal to 4 over 1000 and it can be written in a decimal number like this 0 0.004 so this is how to read decimal numbers so it has a three decimal places right here three decimal places why because it is 
divided by 1,000 with three zeros. Okay, another. Now, what if, if we have 10 thousands? So, it is written in decimal or in a fraction like this, 10 over 1,000. So, if we have 10 thousands, that is actually equal to one hundredth. So, how to write one hundredth in decimal? 0 0.01. This is one hundredth. Hundred has two zeros, right? So, that's why it has two decimal places. Then, ten thousands written as decimal is 0 0.010. 0. So, this is ten thousands. Now, we have here ten thousands. So, this is equal to one hundred. Remember, children, ten thousands is actually equal to one hundred. Because if you add all of these ten thousands, this is equal to one hundred. So, ten thousands is equal to one hundred. Zero point zero one zero also is equal to zero point zero one. All of these four are all equal in value. Okay, next, let's study about the place values of decimal numbers. Look at here. We have ones, so we have four ones. In our tens, we have three. Remember, in decimal, we have the decimal point. This is to separate the whole number and the decimal places. Okay, after the tens is the hundreds, so we have two hundreds. And thousands, we have one thousand. So our decimal number then is 4.321. So we have four ones, three tens, two hundreds, and one thousand. Now let's find the decimal places and the value of each digit. So the digit four, this one, is in the ones place and the value is four. How about the digit three? The digit three is in the tens place. This one, tens place, and the value is 0 0.3. Next is the digit 2, this one. It is in the hundreds place, and the value is 0 0.02. And the last one is our digit 1, this one. And it is in the thousands place, and the value is 0 0.001. So this is how to name or Find the place values of decimal numbers. Don't forget that it has decimal point to separate the whole numbers and the decimal places. Okay, P6, that's all about number sequence and decimals. I will discuss more about this lesson during our Zoom meeting. Thank you for watching and I hope that you gain a lot in this video. Always remember to stay safe and healthy. God bless everyone and have a great day.